G'day guys, my name's Josh from VCM. Uh, today we're going to run through the VCM V8 OTR install on a VF Calais. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to open the box and run through everything that comes in the kit. The kit comes with your OTR intake, fascia panels, infill panel, hose clamps, brackets for the radiator repositioning, all of your clips, OTR to your MAF reducer, MAF to your throttle body reducer, the infill panel brackets and the radiator to OTR brackets and instruction booklet. So first we're going to remove the engine cover, we're going to undo the clamps for the air chamber and we're going to undo the MAF and the air box so we can remove the whole assembly. Okay, so now that we've got the engine cover off, uh, we need to undo the breather for the PCV. It's on the right side of the oil cap and you just need to push down the locking tab and lever it out. So now that we've got the PC breather off, we just need to undo the hose clamp on the throttle body. And we also need to undo the hose clamp on the MAF and then we can remove the chamber. So next we just need to unplug the MAF and tuck that up out of the way. And we'll also undo the clamp for the MAF and then we'll remove that as well. So another thing is you remove the rubber reducer off the actual MAF because you won't need to reuse that. So one thing that's very important is that you also need to clean the resistor uh, in the MAF uh, because they can get quite dirty and give you false readings. So you should always use a good quality MAF cleaner that will clean the diode. So don't ever use anything like a brake clean or a carby clean because you can damage them. Make sure that you don't touch them with anything or use air pressure that's too high because they are quite fragile. Okay, so to remove the air box, we're also needing to bend this post forward just to give yourself some clearance past the positive battery terminal cover and it's a 10 mil bolt. And now that you've got that uh, moved forward, we can undo the nuts and then remove the air box. So now that you've got the air box removed, uh, the stud at the back is bent forward. So you'll need to get a shifter and then bend it back into its original position. Okay, so now that we've got the air box removed, uh, one, another thing that we like to do is remove the throttle body and give the throttle body a clean. So next we'll remove the radiator support cover which is which has four 10 mil bolts holding it and six T20 Torx bit screws holding it. And then just to remove that, you just can hold the latch up a little bit, move it back and then forward. Okay, so next we'll undo the radiator support brackets and it's just two 10 mils and we'll undo those. And you also need to undo the bracket that's mounted to the radiator support. So these just unclip. So you push the whole radiator support forward and then you can just pull these off the posts on the radiator. So you can actually discard these and you need to keep the 10 mil bolts to reuse later. Okay, so now we've got the radiator support brackets off. We need to get to the bolt uh, underneath this radiator support bracket, which is a 10 mil bolt. And once you've got these removed, you need to retain them because you'll use them at a later date as well. And this support bracket also has the wiring loom connected to it. So you'll need to get some pliers and actually unclip the 
loom retainers so you can remove it. Now that you've got the brackets removed, I also pull this retaining clip out from under the bracket down here and I put it up here so then it hides it out of the way and you can also run it the wiring loom up under underneath the brackets when we fit these for the radiator. Okay so now we'll fit the VF OTR bracket kit. These are the OTR retaining brackets. Uh, you'll need to use these on a VF and if you ordered a VE kit these brackets won't come with it because you already have the provisions for the OTR uh, on the actual vehicle. Okay, so you need to make sure that the slot on the back of the bracket lines up with the tab on the radiator support and it actually goes in and locks the bracket in place. With the bracket, I also put the wiring loom up in, there's a recess uh, above the bolt hole. So you can actually put that wiring loom above that, put the bracket on so it tucks in nice and neat behind there. Okay, so next step will be the uh, radiator uh, repositioning brackets and you'll also need the two small plastic washers for this step. So you have your left side that goes underneath the radiator cap and then the other side connects around the radiator. To fit the radiator repositioning brackets, you'll also need the two plastic uh, washers from the small parts kit and you'll need to reuse the uh, radiator support bracket bolts. So the left hand side that goes underneath the radiator cap, it actually goes under the support bracket, the radiator support bracket, and then into and under the radiator cap where there is a small slot just under here and it'll actually physically push into that slot And then you'll also need to line the bracket up and then you can fit your uh, slotted washer into the hole and then you'll reuse the bolt that you had from your radiator support bracket. So the driver's side bracket will go underneath the radiator support and it will go over the radiator tank and then hold the radiator tank in place. Line up your hole with your slotted washer and then use the other bolt. Okay, so now that we've got the radiator repositioned and leaned back, you'll notice that the top radiator hose actually fouls on the fan shroud. So we like to push the radiator hose on to the water pump spout a bit further. To do that, you just get some spring clamp compressors, open up your hose clamp. You'll have to crack the actual hose and itself loose. So. Once you've got that seal cracked loose, you can actually press the hose on further and then refit your spring clamp back into the original position. Now you'll see that we've moved the radiator hose. You'll have some clearance there now. So now that you've got all of your brackets on, you can sit your radiator support panel back on and then we can bolt it back down. So now that you've got your cover on, uh, we'll do these uh, bolts up and you just need to make sure that you don't over tighten them because it is plastic and they will break. Now we'll be building the OTR in this step because it just makes things a little bit easier uh, to build it uh, on the bench and then we'll fit it into the car as a one assembly. Okay, so in this step with building the OTR, you'll notice that the MAF has a directional arrow for airflow direction and the uh, MAF connector will be on the passenger side of the car. I like to put the clamp on first and then it just makes life a bit easier. So when you get your MAF in, you can just slot it in and connect it like that. So once you've got your math in your reducer, uh, I like to clock 
the actual MAF just off center a little bit. So then the connector for the MAF actually will sit underneath the engine cover. And to tighten the clamp, uh, you'll see that it's a bit tricky to get to. So all you need to do is just fold the reducer back on itself. And just to hold it tight so you can do up the clamp. So you can install the little duckbill grommet. In this step, uh, fitting the MAF to the OTR itself. And then another thing that I like to do is you get the large hose clamp. And because this is a, an oval shape, I like to just give it a little uh, tweak for it to take, start to take the same shape as the OTR. And in each corner, I just like to give it a little, just a little tweak just so it takes the same shape as the OTR. And then that way it actually makes it pretty nice and easy to install. And you'll notice that with the hose clamp, I like to run the adjuster screw underneath. And you also need to make sure that you don't over tighten the plastic uh, OTR because you will start to crush the opening and it will give you a, um, an air leak underneath the OTR itself. The next step will be to fit the hose clamp before you fit the MAF to throttle body reducer and you'll have the uh, PCV hose uh, inlet coming on the same side as the MAF connector. And I like to just clock that to have it just under the same position as the MAF wiring connector. Okay, so that's the completed uh, OTR build and you'll notice that the arrow for the MAF direction, it's not quite in the center. Um, I just like to do that just because it gives you clearance for your MAF connector under your engine cover. Okay, so it's easiest just to put the clamp over the uh, throttle body itself, and then we can install our OTR assembly. I just like to tuck the MAF wiring just behind that um, purge valve line and then just connect it there like that. So this is your infill panel. It goes in where your air box used to go. Uh, it's just to cover up the open hole where your wheel arch is. So it will go in to here and you will Notice that on this model for a VF, the actual infill panel will need to be trimmed to clear the headlight. And to give you an indication of how much we take out, uh, I've just uh, marked it here. That's just a, an example of how much we sort of cut out of it. Okay, so the next step to fit the infill panel, we'll take off this earth, which makes it easier to fit the infill panel over the stud, you can fit the earth and the post back on. You reuse the post that you pull out that was retaining the original airbox. And put that in there. And then one of the original 10 mils that you removed from the airbox you can use on there. The next step will be to fit the PCV hose from the rocker cover to the throttle body reducer. Okay, so we'll connect the PCV hose um, back to the original position that we removed in the first step. So the PCV hose 
you connect that to your rocker cover and I like to tuck it underneath all of the existing hoses just that way it's nice and neat and you can't see it and another step I like to do is it's just a little bit longer so you can just trim it and then stick it under and back into your throttle body to MAF reducer. Okay, so the last step is that we'll put the fascia brackets onto the radio to support on each side. So this will be your passenger side bracket and this is your driver's side bracket. It's also good to uh, remove the bolts one side at a time. Otherwise, if you remove uh, the driver's side and passenger side bolts, the radiator support will shift. It will slide the uh, fascia bracket underneath the radiator support in between the support and the uh, inner brace. It's also a good idea to get the bolts in and just put them in finger tight, just because it will give you some adjustment with the fitting the fascia panel itself. It's good to get the fascia panel in with the bolt still loose, so then you can get your fascia panel uh, in the right position. Now that you've got that all adjusted and your bolts tight, you can put in the retaining clip, uh, which is supplied in the small parts kit. Okay, so to fit the driver side bracket, it's easiest just to pop the fuse box cover up. and then it'll give you easier access just to get the bracket in. And same again, it's just easier if you put the uh, bolts in hand tight, finger tight. So you can put your fuse panel back on. And then put your driver's side fascia panel on and just line up the holes again. And once you've got it lined up, then you can tighten your bracket bolts. Okay, so you'll see that the fascia panel on the driver's side has a little locating hole, and that's so the clip can clip into that. You'll notice that the last remaining hole doesn't have provision for the clip to sit into, so you can just fit a clip into the hole. The very last step will be to install the engine cover if it has one. And as you can see with the last step fitting the engine cover, you can see that it is very close to the MAF connector, and that's why I like to clock the MAF just off centre.